Hello and welcome to a special bonus edition of Moments in the Bible. I'm your host, David Church. Back on Tuesday, we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, where we ended with the verse that told us to abide with God. And as I mentioned before, you're going to see right up here, there is going to be a link to a message series on spiritual warfare. It's called Teach My Hands to War that I've been teaching to my adult Bible class uh, here in North Carolina. The Bible class is called The Shipyard, but we're posting the messages here on Onward and Upward because it's too important. And the last message we taught was called Abiding. And I hope you'll take some time to listen to that message because it's really the most important thing a Christian can do. Because without abiding, uh, uh, you're not going to succeed in the Christian life. In that same passage of scripture, Jesus said, without me, you can't do nothing. And so we need to make sure we get this concept. And just like any good uh, teacher, the Bible gives us lots of different ways to understand something. Jesus was the master illustrator. He was constantly using different things around him and, and happenstances and, and traditions and things that people would understand in order to teach important truths, often the same truth repeatedly. When I was in college, I took economics. And uh, one of, uh, actually, our textbook in economics was Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. Now, I don't remember how many chapters were in the book. I want to say it was like 10. And there was only one lesson about economics in the whole book, which basically the whole point of the, uh, the, the lesson was that whenever you are thinking of making economic decision, you need to, number one, think of everyone who will be impacted, not just you. And then you also need to think of the long-term effects of the uh, financial decision you're going to make. So both who it affects and how and, and what will happen down the road. Yeah, it's great today, but in three years, you'll be bankrupt. Not a good idea. But why did they need so many chapters to teach the same thing over and over again? Because each and every chapter was a different example of how that lesson applied. So that maybe if you didn't get it in chapter one or two, maybe you get it in chapter three. Maybe you had to wait till chapter seven because then it would click. I'm using the same principle that the Bible uses here on abiding. What does it mean to abide? And again, when you look at the word in the Bible, it, it literally has the idea of to remain, to stay, to live, to be in, in to, to stay put in a specific mindset, uh, expectancy, location. Abiding is about staying in the full presence of God. And there is a difference between having the presence of God and dwelling in the presence of God. You see, what do you mean? It's just like the Holy Spirit. When we get saved, we all get the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says that if any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of his. So we all get the Holy Spirit. But just because we have the Holy Spirit doesn't mean we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And yes, being filled with the Holy Spirit and abiding in the Spirit, uh, abiding with God are the same thing. How then do we abide with God, especially if you've listened to this message, and if you haven't, I highly encourage you to go listen to it. Um, how do we abide? How do we do that? And really, what we're going to learn today is over here in the book of Romans, chapter 13, where the Bible says this in verse 13 Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in writing and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now there's a lot of stuff there and we could really dive into it. You, you may be sitting here going, what's chambering? What's right? What, what's wantonness? In this instance, it doesn't actually matter for what we're trying to teach. You get the idea, they're bad things, okay? You wanna look them up, grab a Bible dictionary and look at them. They're not that hard to, to, to find out what they mean. Get Strong's, look them up, it's easy to find. When it says that we're to walk honestly, as in the day. So when we're faced with sins, the way that we walk is going to determine how we handle those sins. Verse 14 says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So putting on the Lord Jesus Christ is what is going to help us make no provision for the flesh so that we don't fulfill the lust thereof. It's by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ that we're able to make no provision for the flesh. And obviously there are practical ways you can do this. Um, I know that there are apps out there, for example, that automatically report what websites a, a man goes to to anybody who wants to have it to. Uh, so on his phone, uh, it sends a report at the end of the day to whoever, usually it's a man's wife, and maybe there's an accountability partner. I don't know. There's stuff you can practically do for sure. But 
in context, it's putting on the Lord Jesus Christ that does this. Now, the example here is to put him on like a garment. And the Bible uses this illustration many, many times. And when you think about this, when you get up in the morning and you, you go through your morning routine and you brush your teeth, at some point in the day, you put everything on that you're going to take through the day uh, with you. For me, most of the time that involves wearing a suit because that's kind of the dress code where I'm at. So I got to wear the suit. I got shoes on. Why do I have shoes on? Because I don't want to hurt my feet walking across the asphalt. Plus, I'm pretty sure I get sent home and told to put some shoes on. Yeah. There is one other. There are two other things, though, that I always make sure are on. The first thing, my wedding ring. Always have this on. The other thing is my watch. Now, you'll notice right now my watch isn't on. You know why? Because last night, well, this is Saturday, so technically Monday night, uh, whenever I uh, went to bed, I had taken my, my watch off, my Apple Watch, and I set it on uh, the stand, and I forgot to put it on the charger. Oops. Wake up in the morning, it's almost dead. Now, it's, it's right here now. It just finished charging, so I could now put it on. But I couldn't before because it wasn't going to last me through the day. There wasn't enough power to get it through the day. But you know what, as I've been walking around and my sleeve rubs against that area, it's I'm noticing that the watch is missing. It's, it's, it should be there and it's not there and it's bothering me that it's not missing. And in that there are two important concepts. The first is that I wear it all day. And when it comes to our relationship with the Lord and, and abiding with him, I'm just gonna give you the quick heads up, that we abide in the presence of God in prayer, okay? Prayer is abiding. And I'm not talking about your casual little prayers. If you've only prayed for 30 seconds uh, to a couple minutes before, it's not abiding prayer. Abiding prayer is prayer that you remain there for long periods of time. I have a challenge for you. Have you ever prayed for 10 minutes straight? If you haven't, try it. You'll be shocked at how difficult it can be. Your flesh doesn't want it. Satan is going to fight against you. You ever prayed for 10 minutes? Have you ever tried 20? How about a half hour? You ever prayed for an hour straight? Like, whoa, whoa, brother church, that's crazy. Hey, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. And if you want to see victory over sin, you need to be in that state of prayer. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? When I put this watch on, I don't, I don't. You know, okay, it's the morning. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to get ready to go to work. I got some time. It's all set. I'm doing my thing. Okay, I'm ready to go to work. So I'm going to take it off now. And uh, I'm just going to set it over here on the side and go to work. The watch is doing me no good now. I've gone off and left it where it is. It's not helping me. Just like that, when, when the Holy Spirit of God works in our lives, and we go and dwell in his presence, and we go to put it on, you know what happens? It stays on all day long. I don't take it off. So that very frequently, I look down at it. Oh, okay. I see what's going on now. Oh, the, the, the temperature is 66 degrees. That's great. Oh, it's not raining right now. That's good to know if I have to go outside. I will reference this many, many times a day. It has a function. I don't stop using it because I left in the morning. In fact, I took it with me because I needed it. And when it comes to us, and our lives, we need to be constantly going back to Christ in prayer and subconsciously be in a state of prayer in everything that we're doing. The Holy Spirit of God will uh, come and indwell you and you will learn what the presence of God is like. God is a person. He's not like just a thing. He's not a force. He's knowable. And he wants to have an interactive relationship with you. I'm going to give you all a really good illustration. Guys especially will get this. Women will get it because you've dealt with this with guys. There have been times when my wife and I are talking. And the truth is I'm not giving her my full attention. I'm listening to her, but my mind is divided. Either I'm thinking about something else or, hey, Lord forbid, I'm actually on this thing doing something and I'm not really listening. There is a huge difference between when I'm like, yeah, absolutely, babe. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I agree. Uh, they should not have done that to you. Versus, really? Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that, that's a problem. Notice how my, my attention is, is focused on her. Set your affection on things above. 
it's the same thing, man. You've got to have this presence, but this is not going to do me any good if I'm taking it with me, but I'm not using it. I'm not checking it. I'm not going back to it. Our time in the presence of God should be continual, going back, praying, praying, praying. We got plenty of things to pray for. You don't think you got enough things to pray for? Just think about your own life and all the things you want to change there. You'll be in prayer for a while. Then move out to your family members. You'll be there for a while. Move out to your friends. They'll be there for a while. You need more to pray about? Hey, I'll hook you up with some prayer requests. Seriously, you can stay in prayer for a long time. And by the way, just like when this watch was off and it irritated me. And by the way, there's only one thing that irritates me more than not having this on. It's not having this on. If I don't have my ring on all day, I'm doing this with my fingers because it feels weird because it's not there. It should be there. Why isn't it there? I need this ring. We should notice the absence of Christ's presence, active, full presence in our lives. Again, he's not going to leave us or forsake us. We have the Holy Spirit of God. But it should bother us when we don't fully experience the presence of God, we should feel his tug. Come back to me. See, Brother Church, I've never experienced it. Set a goal to pray for a long period of time. And one of the things you pray for is for the indwelling presence of God. The disciples asked, teach us to pray. Not teach us how to pray. Teach us to pray. Pray that to God. Father, teach me to pray. Teach me to abide. He'll show you. He's a good father. He's the master teacher. That's what a master is. He's a teacher. He will teach you how to do that. Take Christ throughout the day and don't just do your devotions in the morning. I read my Bible. I prayed. Okay, we're all good. I'm going to walk out in the day and pretend nothing ever happened. No, 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 no. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Take him with you. Go back and reference and, and, and utilize him throughout the day. Read his scriptures. Pray uh, to the Lord and see what God will do. Watch how your life changes. You get angry when you're on your commute to work. I... I me in the car. Ah. It's amazing how much better my attitude is if I spend that time praying instead of listening to music or an audiobook or a podcast. It's amazing. And there's nothing wrong with listening to music or, or uh, uh, listening to an audiobook or a podcast. But I need God if I want to live up to the full potential of what I need to be. And if I want my temper to be in check, it's by putting on the Lord Jesus Christ that. I don't make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And it's amazing. Someone cuts me off and I'm like, meh, meh. Someone stops on a yellow that I know we could have made it through. Oh, come on. You've been there. The difference between yellow, come on, and okay, okay, is often this abiding. Dwelling in the presence of God in prayer. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Go back constantly, consistently use him. And if he's not there, it should bother you. And if it doesn't, then pray and ask God, Lord, teach me to abide in your presence in prayer in such a way that it bothers me when it doesn't happen. And see what God will do. Thank you for joining us for a bonus edition of Moments in the Bible. If you've missed previous episodes, you can now click this link up here at this point to go back and check those uh, and, and see that in the description. I'm so happy you please uh, and pleased that you joined us today. We'll see you on Tuesday. Remember to subscribe if you have not done so.